What is up, everybody? You know I always start this show off by showing love to those companies who help make this podcast possible. First and foremost, you know who it is. Blue on. I know everybody that listens to me, you're all super tech. You don't need tech support. You guys can fix it in your fucking sleep. I know. But for all of you out there that don't, and you still get caught up sometimes like the rest of us, um, know that you're not alone. You ever had that 449, that, I mean, 459 feeling, uh, knowing that you're stuck on something and man, the OEM um, tech support is only got till five. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, guess what? You can call Blue On Tech Support 365 days a year, every single day, 24 hours a day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, you name it, there is somebody there to take your phone call. Um, they are growing and growing as far as being able to take care of more things, as far as like the industrial commercial kind of side. Um, and these are legit technicians. They are me and you. They're us. They just happen to be behind a phone now. Um, so these guys know what they're doing. Guys and girls, excuse me. They know what they're doing, and they are there to help you. I, I get it. We have the parts ordering stuff. Um, all that is amazing, but I also understand that a lot of you can't control where you get your parts from. If you can, by all means, use the Blue On app, um, help it locate your parts. It'll give you a breakdown. If you can't find an OEM motor, it'll tell you of a generic that'll work exactly with what you're trying to do just to help make your job easier. But the tech support, they are slowly unveiling for all of you that can't choose where you're going to get your parts, that it's going to be in the app store, 10 bucks a month, and it's going to be unlimited tech support calls. And uh, I've had so many people reach out to me. I know that's going to be huge. So just know that's coming. And remember, my friends over at Blue On, they are upgrading the HVAC industry, and they've done a damn good job so far. All right? So if you've not downloaded the Blue On app, what are you waiting for? Next. Got to do a couple since I missed some shows, man. It's my friends over at Company Cam. This is going to be more for the managers and the business owners. I know the technicians, this really can't help you, but know that this is awesome. Uh, all of you know that House Call Pro was one of my other sponsors. I'll talk about them in a minute. But Company Cam is an add-on to any of the major CRMs that are out in the market today. Company Cam is an add-on that organizes all of your photos, your videos, your pictures. All of that stuff gets time-stamped. Uh, geotag, you know exactly who took it, when they took it, um, the customer's address, everything is in there. So it's one of those CYA, cover your ass. You know, if a customer says, oh, well, that wasn't there. Well, well, here's a picture from before, you know, the first day we quoted this job and see that damage was already there. Um, something along those lines. Um, plus, just to keep it organized, how many of you had to Upgrade your phone storage because you have pictures of nomenclature plates or furnaces or RTUs or whatever it is. Those days are over. Now it's all stored in the company cam and it doesn't have to be on your cell phone anymore. So when you're looking for a picture of your beautiful wife or if you're a lady, your handsome husband or your kids, that's what you're going to find. Not work pictures mixed in. Company cam does so many things. They've added on to it. I keep saying this. I've been trying to get one of them on here because I know that they do so many things now that I'm not even saying. I'm not doing um, them justice. But I know just for what I know, it is amazing. I love having this add-on. Um, our technicians love it, and we will never, ever stop using Company Cam. Uh, remember, if you go to www.companycam.com forward slash HVAC Uncensored, um, they will give you a free 15-day trial, a 14-day trial, uh, no credit card, no nothing. You can try it out for free. And then if you like it, they will give you 50% off your first two months. So I got you a deal. I highly recommend that you guys go check it out regardless of what CRM you're using uh, because Company Cam is that good. Uh, the last one I want to do and uh, let everybody know, I have to change it down below I was able to make my um, link with uh, House Call Pro a lot simpler because at first it was like a dash and people were having trouble. So now it is actually um, www.housecallpro.com forward slash uncensored. Uh, or Matter of fact, let me make sure I'm getting this right because um, I know people were having trouble and um, it got to be kind of a pain point. 
And um, I didn't want that to. Yes. So housecallpro.com slash uncensored. That is the new code. I will make all the changes necessary in on the back end. So you guys know that. But um, that is going to give you the same kind of thing that company cam is doing, which is going to be 14 day free trial. Then they're going to give you 50% off your uh, your first two months just to get going. To me, I think House Call Pro is one of the best bang for your buck CRMs on the market. For what you get versus what you pay, it's a no-brainer. A lot of these other ones, they're awesome, but uh, you better bring your checkbook. That's all I'm going to say. Um, we love House Call Pro. We've been able to build a several million dollar company, well, we know $7 million company on House Call Pro. So we haven't outgrown it yet. Um, so just know that. But remember, work simpler, grow smarter, House Call Pro. Let's do the pledge. Get on with this show. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States. And thank you to all those men and women who defend it. Welcome to the number one rated HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Here we are, another Wednesday night and another amazing show for you. Apologize for the late uh, start. Uh, it's been a been a goofy night. Um, but uh, thank you to my, my guest for, um, you know, being able to wait for me and stuff like that. I had to take my mom at the last minute to uh, be able to get her blood drawn to check some level. The doctor called at like seven o'clock and was like, I need you to do this right now. So I was like, you got it. I'm on the way there now. But anyway, we're here, man. Hope everybody has had a great week so far. Um, if you guys have been following me on Facebook, man, I've had a lot going on. Um, settled on my house on Friday, bought a new car on Saturday, uh, which has all been planned. Truly blessed uh, that we've been able to do all this. But now it's the moving process. So the way it's looking, this is going to be the last podcast in this studio. If God forbid there is no podcast next week, I'll try to put something out, but just know it's because things didn't get set up fast enough, but we'll see. I'm trying to aim for next Wednesday to be the first show in the new podcast. But with that being said, man, I have an amazing guest uh, tonight. He's a good friend of mine and uh, I've been able to spend a lot of time with him at HR and different events. The guy is super hilarious, but He's so funny that people fail to realize how smart this guy is. He knows his shit on a whole nother level. Um, the information that he gives on his podcast, he breaks it down in ways that people can understand and they can learn. So you guys know what I'm talking about. If you do not already check out the Adventure Refrigeration Podcast, you should. And AKA the 2024 Mentor of the Year, Mr. Brett Wetzel. What's going on, Gil? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, man. Uh, I was actually supposed to be in, actually in Pittsburgh this week, and I had some scheduling conflicts that happened with work, uh, and it was either I get to enjoy myself up in Pittsburgh or I teach a class for the, the guys at Coolsys, and that's what I decided to do. Um, so I canceled my trip to the Pittsburgh. Um, you know, we, we've been just, and, you know, basically, you know, trying to do as much CO2 training as humanly possible. So this is now, I think the third class, I think we've uh, trained up to about 33 people. Um, and it's an exhausting class, not just for me, but like for them as well. Cause you know, everyone's asking all these crazy questions, which is great. I want them to. 
Um, but then you're always on your game, just making sure that you're giving them the right information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and how, that's a week long class. Yep. Ooh, so, man. yeah, it's been a while. So, like, I, I went on vacation last week for the first time. The family and I went up to, we drove from Dallas to Oklahoma City to Oklahoma City to Tulsa to Tulsa to Branson, Missouri, and then out to uh, Arkansas to go visit my daughter's boyfriend who apparently is 16 and doesn't know his address. And uh, so that was interesting and funny. Um, and my, my son is extremely savage. So he's sitting in the back of the car and uh, he's seven, um, but he, he's a savage. And we roll up to the kid's house because he told us it was X street, but it was not that street. It was another street. And uh, so we, we get there, Jake rolls down his window. He's like, how comes a 16 year old doesn't know his address, but a seven year old does my kid. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's good. You got a vacation though, man. Um, yeah, but Saturday we drove eight hours back and then I got in the car on Sunday at around noon and then drove right here to Houston. So yeah, it's just been, it's been exhausting. And then because of some scheduling conflicts, now I have to go to, California to teach another class on Monday, and which means I get off here Friday, I'll have off Saturday, I fly out Sunday afternoon uh, out to LA and teach that. And then finally, I get to be home for a full week, which has been the first time in a little bit. So. Man, that's crazy. I mean, it's people think, see the jobs, and they're like, oh, you get to travel and it's great. And there's, you know, probably definitely good parts to it, but you are, you know, you got away from home. I mean, that's some people, maybe that's a good thing. Some people it's not, you know, I, I like my family sometimes. <laughs> they like you too, right? So yeah, yeah. 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 They like when I pay the bills and then leave. Um, but <laughs> it, it's funny if, if God forbid somebody listen to this, does it know, um, who exactly you work for and exactly what, what you do. You're a technical trainer, correct? Correct. Uh, so I, I work for Coolsys, um, uh, basically in charge of the whole training program. So I been working for Coolsys for about eight years. Um, I started off as a technician, uh, worked my way up to a level seven technician, worked my way up to a service supervisor, then basically became a regional trainer where I was training all over, uh, Texas and all over Oklahoma. And I was getting kind of complacent, kind of bored and, uh, corporate gave me the opportunity to, you know, uh, really, you know, uh, go around the country and like work on different equipment. Um, and, you know, be able to train other people around the country because, you know, I, I, they, you know, you need, you, there's not very many people out there. Um, so, I mean, if, if I have the opportunity to help train anybody up, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and at one point they're like, Hey, you're in charge of training now. I'm like, okay. So, uh, we've, we've developed a whole bunch of different programs, you know, uh, cool. Uh, historically has been a commercial industrial, uh, you know, uh, contractor, right. You know, doing a lot of cold storage, supermarket stuff like that. Um, past couple of years, we've acquired different companies. Um, uh, we probably have, I think 90, I think 90 offices now throughout the country. Um, and so we have all this big brash of, of like commercial and it's kind of been unfair for the past couple of years. So one of my biggest prerogatives since I've, I've been here in the big seat is, is, you know, basically creating light commercial curriculum, um, which I have done. We've, we've created, uh, just about five, I'm sorry, four different classes, level, uh, two, three, four, and five. And actually there's so much information in two, we've actually split it up into an A and B course. You know, I looked at the curriculum of what I really wanted them to learn. And I was like, there's no way it was going to be like crapping on a screen door. Like there were, there was no way they were going to get all this information all in one week and actually be useful. Yeah. So I made the decision. I was like, let's split it up into two courses. So we'll do an A and B. Um, and one of the other biggest prerogatives I've had is, you know, natural refrigerants. I mean, you know, you know, the United States has been making their way into CO2 refrigeration for, at least the past 12 or 15 years, but now all of a sudden we're getting close to the deadline where they're cutting back where you're not allowed to install, you know, newer, bigger systems with uh, chemical refrigerants, HFOs and HFCs, you know, um, unless it's under a certain weight class. Right. So now everybody's installing CO2. And so 
you know, the more and more people out there need to know how to work on it because there are some little intricacies. I mean, it's it's a lot the same as uh, regular DX chemical refrigeration. There's just a little couple of nuances with it. Um, I've also had a prerogative of uh, doing some other classes because, you know, you got transcritical CO2, which, you know, is 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 one animal itself. You have subcritical uh, cascade CO2 and then you have subcritical pump liquid overfeed CO2. And so they do basically the same thing. It's just a little, delivered a little bit differently. Um, and I'm also creating an advanced energy management course, um, you know, because technologies grows. Different manufacturers come up with different stuff all the time. Yeah. So the hardest thing about commercial refrigeration, right? You have upwards of five or six major energy management uh, companies that come up with new technologies every year. And so trying to, you know, edit the books every year to keep adding those technologies and no, more technologies, like it, the book would end up being a thousand pages and there's no way you could get through it. So, you know, we have a level system here at CoolSys where like, you know, you, you go as a level two and then three and then four all the way up to seven. And, you know, I was like, well, that's great. And, and that covers, you know, your, your gaps for, you know, the, the different levels that you want to get to. But, you know, I wanted some supplementary, supplementary stuff. So, you know, make getting stuff out there that necessarily doesn't mean that you level up, but you're still increasing your knowledge and your, your knowledge base. Um, so maybe you could justify, Hey, listen, you know, I, I'm able to call, handle these calls, you know, and now I'm working on this harder equipment. Let's, let's talk about a potential raise. You know what I mean? So like, uh, you know, just trying to make the technicians, you know, more apt and, and more knowledgeable and, and then all the new technologies that are coming out because every year something is new. Like I love my job because I, I never get bored. That's one thing I, I don't like. Um, I don't like complacency. Um, I don't like boredom. And if I'm learning something new, I'm never bored. And like, I, I've also inadvertently become, you know, the, the, a lot of the people that call me, you know, from all over the country and they're like, Hey, I need help on this. I need help on this. Great. Um, I'm involved with a couple of different projects that are going on and, and, uh, just trying to help out to make sure because I mean, if we we get all the bugs worked out, then it makes the next job easier and the next job easier. And then it's not so difficult. And it just it makes everyone's life so much easier because we're not go, you know playing back and forth with the with the manufacturers and the engineers and just just trying to get the information out there to, to, you know, make everyone a little bit more comfortable and safer for what they're, what they're working on. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know how it is in this industry, man. A lot of people, it's it's ignorance. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that people don't know something, so they get scared of it, you know? And it's once you learn, it's like, oh, that, that wasn't that bad. Um, and I'll be honest. I started in industrial um, commercial stuff and then went to residential, but I never did much with CO2. So I, I don't, that's not something I could help somebody because I don't, I don't know. Um, but I would love your opinion. Um, and I, is with all the resi guys, you know, um, like losing their damn mind about H2L. And I'm like, guys, this is not a big deal. Like, I don't know why you're getting so, it's not like, you know, these refrigerants haven't been on the market. I mean, R32 has been out for a while. There's probably, I don't know, thousands, millions of pieces of equipment out there that have R32 in it. I mean. Yeah. Um, so I mean, like a lot of it is is you know not being not being edu educated about it, right? I mean, four ten A is flammable to a little little degree, right? Um, it has R thirty two in it, one hundred percent. So that's what I'm saying. So like we we deal with flammable refrigerants, some flammable than more. You know, people people post these videos where units are exploding. All right, but you got to really think about like why did stuff like that happen? Remember, like ignition explosions really can't happen without oxygen, right? So what does that mean? That means 90% 90, 90 chance, if I had to guess, right, if I had to guess why that you see those videos, it's probably because bad practices, right, where, you know, they they didn't pull a good vacuum or they just sent it, as, as you know, Larry the Enticer would say, and basically just, you know, uh, you know got non-condensables in the system, you know, with the damn thing. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Jen asking you questions. Uh, training products you might be working on. I expect that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, we went over some of the training stuff that we're doing. Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm on here tonight. I want to talk about, uh, you know, the uh, the program that uh, that we're, we're starting at CoolSys. So if you want to start getting into it, unless you have some other questions, I mean, we let, let's finish the ATL thing. So, it, you know, commercial technicians are still, you know, up in arms about the whole CO2 thing. Like, 
oh my god the higher pressures because the the pressure on the co2 system on transcritical right can be as high as 1500 pounds um you know the release blow on the transcritical side is 1740 there's a whole bunch of bad information like i've heard you know some people you know doing podcasts are like oh yeah everything has to be stainless steel no it doesn't <laughs> not everything like there's only like one set of line from basically the discharge of the transcritical compressor and when i say transcritical compressor i mean the compressors that actually go above the critical point of co2 like actually every refrigerant has a critical point uh, where there's no PT relationship, where the mm -hmm. refrigerant just becomes this crazy mixture, plasma mix of, of you know, a whole bunch of different uh, states. But like with R22, I think it's like I think 600 pounds or something like that, something insane that we never see. Yeah. Um, you know, but with CO2, I mean, it's, it's, you know, 87 degrees saturated, right? And what does that mean? So that means that if you have a condenser or what they call a gas cooler, um, you know, if the ambient is at, you know, 82 degrees, and you have a five degree TD on that, that means, means you're running at about 87 degrees saturated. You run at that transcritical edge. And once it goes to above that critical point, it's considered transcritical. So like, you know, there are CO2 systems that do not run transcritical. They make, make them subcritical. They only run 490 pounds. But like for a transcritical system, basically most of the stuff, most of the pressures that you're gonna see is like 490, maybe 530 pounds and below. That's 410A pressures. Is, There's only a certain... I'm sorry, Go I was ahead. gonna say, is that based on the application or just the system style? You know, they have like medium temp refrigerants, low temp. So when you say like transcritical, is that the system design or the application it's being used for? Transcritical means essentially that the refrigerant actually runs above its critical point, above 87 degrees saturated, right? So if you have an air-cooled anything, right, and it's, you know, uh, like I said, 82 degrees outside and the condenser, like, so in air conditioning, right? Typically you have what, 25 or 35 degree TD on the condenser, right? So if it's hundred degrees outside, you're going to run 125 degrees saturated or 135 degrees saturated, right? Well, with CO2, once we get up to 87, there's no pressure temperature actually relationship. The PT chart basically stops and because they don't really know what state the refrigerant's in. So we have to mitigate that refrigerant to get it back into a form that we can handle it. And that's why you have this HPV or high pressure valve to, to help mitigate that. Gotcha. Um, there, but I mean, listen, if you run an, a water cooled, uh, you know, water cooled system, as far as the condenser, like water, I'm sorry, chilled water for the condenser loop, you could actually keep that system subcritical all the time. Right? So if you had 70 degree water, Sometimes you have what? Usually about a 10 degree TD off of that. So you'd run 80 degrees. That would be running subcritical. So it, you know, it wouldn't be considered a transcritical system. It's only considered transcritical when it has the availability that it has to go up above that 87, uh, you know, 87.8. But like I said, I mean, you have subcritical systems, subcritical cascade, where instead of the, you'll have a primary refrigerant, like an HFO or an HFC, uh, that basically will act as a condenser for the CO2. So they're basically have a braze plate heat exchanger. They're using a, a, li a liquid line, um, uh, I'm sorry, just an expansion valve to basically take that pressure of that CO2 and then convert it to about 25 degrees saturated. And then that's basically your head pressure for the CO2. You have CO2 compressors and those CO2 compressors run at around 200 pounds for low temperature. Um, so, and then the head pressure is about 400 pounds. So, I mean, it's basically 410A pressures. There's just some nuances with it. So like with CO2 in general, like if you have liquid um, and you were to, uh, you know, have liquid still in your filter dryers and you just blew the charge, um, you could potentially turn that into dry ice. It's really hard to do. Like everyone's like, oh, dry, it turns into dry ice instantly. No, it's really, it's kind of more difficult to do, but it's just being aware. Like I, I can't just take a tank of liquid CO2 and dump it right in the system because if I try to do that, what can happen is because if I have no vapor in there first, if I'm just trying to purge it out with liquid, I, I've had dry ice actually form inside my gauges. And I'm like, wait a minute, the gauge says 400 here. And then I hold the hose up. I'm like, nothing's coming out because basically I created dry ice in there. So just little nuances that you have to be kind of familiar with when working with it, like anything else, right? Like propane, the, we're working on propane. Propane's more flammable than the A2Ls, you know, yeah. ammonia. Ammonia is nastily toxic and, and like it, it reacts horrible with water. You're made up of 95% water. Guess what? 
get that on, you're going to get a nasty chemical burn. It, it's it's all about be, like respecting it and being educated about it. You do those two things like anything else. I mean, you remember, like, I don't know if you remember. Sorry, you're, you're just a little bit older than me. But like, uh, you know, when when we started switching from, you know, uh, when Puron came out or 410A, right? Oh, my God, that pressure is going to kill somebody. Yeah. We've worked through it. Now we're working out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's yeah. it's generational. Like this stuff happens. And it's funny. Like I make jokes during class, you know, with during CO2. I'm like, boys, we're back in the day R12. I'm like, we can blow the charge now with CO2. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, because there's no recovery uh, method that they have out there. Like you get it down to a vapor and you blow it off. I mean, and there are release all over the system. And like I stated before, like, you know, there's one section of line that either has to be stainless steel black pipe or you know what they refer to as xhp um my canadian friends will know it as k65 it's basically an iron uh iron drawn copper so it's actually a piece of copper it's a little bit thicker of a wall and actually you have to stick a magnet to it it actually kind of sticks to it Hmm. um there's iron in there and it just strengthens it up makes it up to um you know be suitable for like a 130 bar um I think it's 1840 is the burst rate, you know, and the reliefs actually go at um, 1740 on the high side. So there's so many safeties. I mean, we, they've been using CO2. Uh, the first patent for it for it came up actually in the 1850s. Okay. They used it a lot for marine um, because you could then use water cooled, which kept it subcritical, right? You got yeah. nice ocean cold water. So you're not running those crazy, crazy pressures. I have a picture of a guy with awesome 80 socks and loafers and he's working on a co2 compressor you know a picture that i have back in the back in like the 90s you know it just when r12 and 502 and 22 came out they were like hey we don't need to worry about that crap anymore so they kind of like stopped using it and then we found out um that all those other refrigerants that we came out with are bad for the environment so now we're back to the co2 and the you know we're, we're it's going to be back we're going to be dealing propane we're going to be doing co2 uh R32s, a little bit of HFO, very minimal, and uh, a lot of glycol probably. I mean, that's where I think we're all headed. And yeah. ammonia. But ammonia, like I said, you're kind of limited because you can't have it near a school. You can't have it near a hospital. Um, you know, there's a lot of different stipulations with that. I mean, if you said you did industrial, right, you know, like usually on an uh, industrial plant, they'll have, you know, four corners of the building. They'll have a windsock. They'll have a camera point at the windsock. So if you have, an, if you have a release is the wind blowing that way? Okay. Then I'm going that way, you know? So it's all about respecting it. It's all about being educated about it. Um, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox now, but yeah, you're you're good. Yeah. I remember me and my dad working on an ammonia system. And I remember, uh, years later that plant had a leak and it was on the news here, like shut down and all of these people out there. So I, I remember hearing that that stuff is no bueno when it, when it happens. And to be honest, I like learning. Um, and I don't care what refrigerants that we use. Um, if they change it, I really don't. I just worry about the phase out. You know, when you hear like rich in them from the jerks saying that New York is going to say after January 1st, 2025, that, you know, 410 is done. Like that's not going to work. Like we still have customers out there getting systems installed right now. Like that's what bothers me. Like phasing out the old stuff, like let it be a process. Don't just try to flip a switch because that's just going to screw people. But whatever they decide we have to use, if I don't know about it, then I'll learn that, you know, you figure it out and you change with the times. Like you said, we went from guys went from 12. Oh, R22. Oh, now we're using 410. Now it's going to be R454 B and R32. Um, I heard some people debate that, you know, R32 is more trusted and there's more like data on it versus R454B. So I was kind of surprised to see some of the big names like Lennox and Carrier go with it, but they obviously have their reasons. Well, one of the reasons is, I guess, over in Europe, uh, they're starting, you know, because, you know, it, usually all the laws and, and, and things that we adapt usually goes from Europe to Canada to here, right? You know, it's usually what happens. And so some of the A2Ls, uh, from my understanding, have what are called, I think I want to say this wrong, parabens, 
paraffins, uh, basically forever chemicals, and the forever chemicals are getting in the water. So before you know, we, we realize a couple of years from now that those forever chemicals that are in those refrigerants start damaging our water. Um, you know, they're kind of looking at that really closely before they're like, eh, let's not maybe, use, you know what I mean? Like there's still, everything's all still up in the air. You know, we're moving very fast away from everything because we're, you know, we're trying to be, you know, uh, earth conscious or whatever. And, and I can respect that. But I mean, you know, there's also a time frame. You know, we're also supposed to get away from, uh, you know, using the regular, uh, you know, throwaway jugs that we use, right? And we're, we're behind our, our Canadian brethren, right? We're like, you know, they're using, uh, they're using basically recovery cylinders. And that's what their refrigerant comes in. But the industry is not even ready for it because they don't have enough to go around, right? So, you know, we have that issue now with CO2. I mean, like, air gas, like, oh, it's 10% of our, our business. We don't really need to worry about that. But you know, they don't have enough cylinders to go around. So they need the cylinders to fill. You know, we've had, you know, we've had some of these big jobs where they're like, we don't have any more. So you need to empty those and then we'll take them back and then we'll fill them and then we'll come back. So, I mean, you know, but yeah, we're supposed to be, you know, heading to the, to the route of using, you know, uh, uh, reusable refrigerant tanks. So like that, that kind of sucks because then now you're going to have a core charge on every single refrigerant cylinder you have. Oh, shit. Right? Yeah, just like you have the recoveries, right? It's essentially yeah. what they are. They're going to be certified recovery cylinders. They'll be painted. I don't know if they're going to paint them back to the colors of what the refrigerant is. Like, so if you've, you've seen any Canadian, you know, uh, Canadian cats that you follow on on YouTube or whatever, I mean, you'll see a tank of 410A and it's pink, but it's in a recovery cylinder. No, I guess. And I've always thought as United States, like we're always behind everybody else, you know? Like it's, we wait for other people. Uh, a lot of these things that we're doing now, like you said, Canada, um, Europe, they've been doing this shit for a long time. So it's not new. Um, it's been tested. That's where they're getting the, the data from. Um, and I wish that we did what some of the other ones do, like with licensing. I, I wish we did that in the United States, the way they do it in Canada, where it's like kind of, you know. Where you actually have, a, you have to actually go through a program. You know, I, one of one of my biggest problems, like right now, I think last time I looked, there's uh, 369,000 open HVAC positions. Now that's refrigeration, uh, that's HVAC, could be boilers as well. I'm not sure all that what entails, but there is a shortage. Everyone wants to be famous on Instagram. Everyone wants to be famous on YouTube and no one really wants to, you know, do this. And, and the people that maybe even want to even think about it, like when I started, I, I didn't know what this was. I met someone while I was doing water treatment and I was like, what do you do? And he's like, well, we make shit cold. I'm like, well, how does that work? I didn't know. Like, I mean, I, I honestly didn't know, um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, some of these, there's a lot of for-profit training centers out there, which, you know, people might get mad at me for saying, and I don't care um, because, you know, what are you doing? Like you're, you're charging these cats, you know, X amount of dollars and, you know, what do you train them for? Maybe 20 hours in a month. What's that going to do? You know, you're going to teach them maybe how to put gauges on. And then, you know, you know, you're they're They're like, oh, well, now I want like $40 an hour. Ain't going to happen, kid. You know, they're promised what, you know, whatever. And then they end up, you know, going to a contractor and they're like, well, this is too hard for, you know, like I thought I was going to be making this. Well, they're not they're You know, they're not trained up to where they need to be. Like there's some really, really good associate colleges, right? Like, you know, nine month, um, you know, uh, 18 month programs where you basically actually come out with an AA degree. There's one place up in, um, you know, we mess this, mess this name up. Um, up in Oklahoma, it's like Okeechobee or Okie Doggy. I don't know. I forget what it is, but there's a, there's like a college up there and all the cats that I've, came, that I've talked to that actually come out there are brilliant guys. Um, but like, you know, like I said, there's like these for profit ones that are like a month long and yet, they, they're, they're, it's like a total of like 20 hours, you know, cause it's like, it's like three days a week for like four or five hours. What are you going to teach somebody? I mean, you can spend a week on electrical, you know, just electrical, you know what I mean? Not even start talking about refrigeration theory, which, you know, it, you know, I guess this would be a good segue to, for me to, to talk about. So, you know, this is something that's kind of bothered me for a while, right? I mean, like, we're in a shortage, you know, and, and a lot of, I, I haven't seen, as many people leave refrigeration and just go to HVAC in all my, like I've been doing this almost 20, you know, I guess 22 years this year, I'll be 23 this year. And in all my years, I haven't seen as many people just be like, you know what, 
I'm done. Peace. Like there's no work life balance anymore because all the older heads are retiring. Um, and so you have these younger guys that, you know, try to get educated and they don't really know where to go for it. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's why, you know, me being in charge of training is a really good fit. Um, back in March of last year, I've been waiting to talk about this forever because I like, this is, this is just, this is something that I'm really, really passionate about. And I, I think it's going to be great for the industry, um, as well as, you know, great, you know, bringing, bringing kids in. Um, so cool. is starting, uh, something called get paid to train. Hmm. Um, so what we're going to do is, you know, we're trying to motivate, um, you know, younger kids or people that go for maybe one of those for-profit training centers to basically get involved with the trades. CDL industry does something similar, right? Where they're like, Hey, you know, come work for me for a couple, we'll pay you how to learn. And then give me a couple months, uh, you know, ap- you know, ap- after you go through the program and we won't charge you anything for training. So it's a, it's a double whammy, right? You're getting paid to learn a trade or, you know, CDL being a trade and then as well as HVAC and refrigeration. And basically, you know, just, you know, the trade off is you give me a couple months and, you know, uh, you, you work it and, and you're actually learning a, a hard skill that now you can, you know, uh, progress in. So what's nice about Coolsys is that we do have 90 some offices throughout the country, right? So nice. starting the second week of July, um, we're going to be starting this program, Get Paid to Train. Um, well, how it works is, is that uh, we're, we're going to start going through, you know, some some high schools and, and, and some other, uh, you know, the, some other trade schools and seeing who really wants to, you know, hard nose and, and really get into this. And so what, what the program consists of is that you essentially, it's a 12-week program. Nice. Um, you, it's basically nine to five, you get an hour lunch. I, I thought about it, I was like, we'll just do it to 4.30. I'm like, no, they need like, it's going to be so much information and so much lab that I'm like, they need at least an hour to like chill out in the middle of the day. So uh, we're going to make it like eight to five. Um, it's going to happen in Fullerton, California. And it's going to happen in Houston, Texas. Actually, I'm, I'm in Houston right now. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, you get hired as a trainee. Uh, we're going to pay you $20 an hour and basically train you for a total of, of 12 weeks. Eight of those weeks is nothing but book, lab, and, you know, putting your nose to the grindstone and actually, you know, uh, you know, classroom time. That's a good um, game. 20 bucks an hour to start out and learn something that could set you up for the rest of your life. That's a great deal. Right. So, you know, basically why the way it works is so for the first two weeks, you know, we, we, I think we, I think we, we were coming up with the mapping, um, you know, electrical refrigeration theory. Second week, we're going to do safety because I mean, you know, these kids, you know, some of these kids haven't even touched a tool. Right. So, you know, teaching them what, what tool, what the tools are, um, you know, how to be safe. You know, we're actually going to teach them, on, take them on a little driving test, you know, because a lot of them never drove a rig in their life. Right. So, you know, and I mean, a rig, just, you know, van or pickup truck about the law, you know, about what you should do. Right. So when you pull in, you should always back into someone because you're so focused when you're driving. But then when you first turn that ignition, excuse me, and go to take off, you're not really paying much attention. So most a lot of accidents actually happen when you're backing up. So you can alleviate that by just, you know, backing your spot when you've already been paying so much attention to driving. Right. Um, and then the third week you get to work out in the field. So, uh, you know, we have three different, you know, uh, sections of, of, of courses. We have a commercial and industrial, uh, service. So it's like supermarket and cold storage and stuff like that. Um, we also do have some smaller, smaller accounts as well, but predominantly it's all supermarket cold storage. Um, we have, uh, uh, commercial industrial construction. So, sir, you know, sir, uh, construction for the supermarkets, cold storage, you know, and some of the other smaller stuff as well. Um, and then we also have a cool assist like commercial division. So every third week of this program, you get to work in the field and see what flavor of refrigeration, so to speak, that you dig, right? Let's just say, hey, I want to work on the big stuff. When you graduate, you can go work on the big stuff. Maybe not right away. Right. But work towards that goal. Right. Like, you know, because I mean, I'm going to teach you basic ice machines and self contains and basic refrigeration and mini splits and you know, talk about rooftop units and heat and heat pumps. If I can give you all the basics in that eight week section, 
and then you go out in the field and see how it is actually working, I'm going to set you up for success, right? You yeah. know, we're going to teach you to be a lot safer. Um, and then here's the other deal. Like when you graduate, depending on how hard you you hit the books and how well you did and the response we get from back in the field. So the, the, the instructor is going to be reaching out to the, uh, uh, you know, to whoever you're working with for those weeks. Right. And I'm basically asking you, asking the guy that you're working with, how's he doing? What's he doing? Is he on his phone? Do I need to stop that? You know, is he, what's he struggling with? And he's just struggling with electrical a little bit. All right, now I have something to work with. So now the instructor will now focus on that guy or girl to basically get them better at what they're doing in that section. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, you could be in the classroom and, and, you know, see, kind of see what they're doing, but until maybe you see where maybe they might be just missing the mark a little bit. Um, and basically that goes on for 12 weeks after the 12 weeks, depending on how well you did, uh, you can get a, a substantial pay raise after that uh, to be determined. I mean, it's, it's really up to what you actually ended up, how you ended up doing. Yeah. Um, you also get to decide where you want to go. Do you want to, do you want to do commercial? Do you want to do in uh, commercial industrial service or hey, I like building stuff. I want construction. I want to build boxes. I want to, you know, install the equipment or maybe I want to install the equipment first before I actually get into service because I think maybe I'll have a better understanding of that, which is very high probability. Uh, the other thing, we have 90 offices. You want to get out of Cali? Where do you want to go? That's awesome. So, and then so the, the, the small caveat to this is you give me 21 months of service, um, including the three months. Now, if you get there and you realize within that first week that this isn't for you, later you keep your money keep your paycheck what you got roll no no harm no foul you know what i mean but um after that if you know you're in there you're in there for the hall and so i mean the thought was is that you build culture i mean you know if you anyone went to college anyone went to a trade school right you you're, you're basically you're working off of the same goal you're trying to graduate you're trying to get into something right so i mean you build a little bit of culture and like so future generations as well i mean you know, uh, when this starts rolling, um, you know, hell, if my if my son or daughter wants to do this, I'm all about it, which then becomes, you know, more family oriented. Right. You know, yeah. hey, look, you know, dad makes an awesome living when I'm doing what he's doing. I want to do that, too. You know, and same thing. I mean, like we have jobs for everybody and yeah. maybe, uh, you know, and, and it just it just keeps rolling. I mean, and so I want to open up more training centers. So if this is as successful as what I think it's going to be, I want to open up another one and another one. And I'll just be DJ Khaled. Another one, another <laughs> one. You know what I mean? but like, what's that going to do? So, I mean, like the, the thought is, is that I will bring 48 new people into the industry every year until I open up another one. And then basically just keep turning and just keep turning. And that way we keep getting people interested. And then, so the other thing is too, you take some of the graduates that really dig at what they're doing and you take them back and use them for recruiting. Now I take them and like, Hey, listen, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Quilts just gave me the opportunity and I really dig what I do. I make a good living. Um, you should try it out as well. You know what I mean? So, I mean, one of the, you know, they were going to ask like for a small little essay, why you think maybe you might be a good fit for this. And like, I like taking stuff apart. I like knowing how stuff works. Um, you know, a small mechanical aptitude test to see if, you know, if, if you're, uh, if you really, you know, dig, if you really dig about the mechanics and stuff like that. And, um, man, I just think it's going to be successful. I, I mean, I hope so. I mean, uh, you know, I'm all about trying to get new blood into the industry. And if, you know, that's the thing, if no one knows these jobs exist, like, so when I started refrigeration, I knew that dead bodies were put in a morgue. I knew they had to be cold. But I didn't know until I had to put a fan in a morgue that that's where it was. Yeah, you know, unless you unless you're educated about something. I mean, what do you you don't know? Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the word out about the industry, as well as give someone an opportunity because someone can go tomorrow and go to McDonald's and get paid fifteen dollars an hour. I'm like, so why should I do anything hard? Well, this is a career. I mean, I tell people all the time, this is a career. This isn't just a job. This isn't just a nine to five. I mean, like, you know, people always want to get better at this. And one of the pieces of advice that I give them is, you know, at least one week, one week, pick one new thing that you don't know what the heck it is and just research that thing 
and now you're going to be 52 things new, you know, more smarter than where you were last year, which is a, which is a lot. And if you yeah. want to really, really you know, as the grindstone, you do two or three or one one thing one thing a day, 365 new things you can learn, you know, instead of you know thumbing through Twitter. No, a- amen. And first and foremost, um, going back to what you said about you know traditional trade schools, I agree with you 100. percent Um. And that, that sounds awesome. I love everything about what you just said, because I am huge on the training part, um, for myself. And I love training new people because it makes, I feel like, uh, I can, it makes me better and it's rewarding, but I love the idea that you have because I have always wished that they would have trade colleges, like just in every state that was literally not like some bullshit program where it's get them in, get them out, get them in, get them out. Yeah. 20 grand come here for six weeks. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to make 50 bucks an hour when you get out. Yep. Got your money. (laughs) See you later. Um, so I love that and I hope it catches on and you have one in every state and then other people start to wake up and, you know, start to do this. Cause like even the, um, like Votech, I mean, at least in Maryland, it's almost been destroyed. It's like non-existent. Um, You know, like letting these kids know, not even kids, just even like adults who want to change jobs that are like, hey, I wasted time and now I want to do this or I want to do that, to have an opportunity to really learn and be set up in in a proper way. Because I feel like we're already in a shortage, like, like you said, and then people go to school and they're promised all this stuff and it doesn't happen. So they say, screw it. And they go do something else. Oh, my cousin does, you know, delivers beer or whatever. I don't know. You know what I mean? And they end up not not doing it. So I love that training program, dude. That's awesome. I hope that it kicks off, you know, like wildfire and spreads. Oh, that's what that's I mean. That's what the hope is, right? I mean, it's not limited to, you know, kids that went to school or high school kids. I mean. If you were in, you know, some kind of manufacturing job and you were doing maintenance, why not? If you were, you know, working at, you know, uh, one of the big box stores of being one of their maintenance guys doing lights and stuff, and you want to learn more about the refrigeration aspect and the HVAC aspect, why not? Right. I mean, it doesn't limit, it doesn't limit it just to, just to kids. I just, you know, use that as a, as a stepping stone, uh, to try to, you know, try to fill the, fill the seats. I mean, you know, I, I, like I said, I want this to be successful. I, you know, I want participation and, you know, that's, you know, I'm, I'm making a run on the podcast, uh, you know, circuit because I, I want to make sure people are aware that this is going to happen. I mean, you know, uh, Quilts is with their TA department is going to, you know, put the word out and basically try to get, you know, everyone educated that these things are going to be going on. Um, and I want this to be successful, not just because I, you know, it might, is my job landing on it? No, I, you know, and even if it was, I just wanted to be successful because I love this industry. I love what I do. Um, you know, and I, I want other people to, to be able to, you know, uh, you know, have, have the, 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 the benefits of what, you know, what I've had. I mean, yes, it's a lot of, it's hard work, right. Um, you know, you put in some hours occasionally. Um, but also it's trying to get a little bit of work-life balance. And, and that's the other thing that the program actually does, you know, especially in the areas that the program is going to be right. One of the reasons why I said, you know, we've had a lot of people leave is because of the work-life balance, right? You know, they, they work in too many hours. And so, you know, the idea is, is that in, you know, this program predominantly is supposed to be going on in the summertime. So we're starting the second week of July. So what does that mean? That means now I'm going to have kids or, you know, kids or whoever wants to be in the program, um, basically be helping out the guys that are in the, in the field in the summertime. So, you know, that they can go home at more of a reasonable time, you know, cause I mean, that there is no one to be had. Technicians are not falling out of trees. No. We have to grow them. I mean, we, we've, and I, and I, that's why I say, you know, I agree with you with the whole Canada thing where it should be, you know, we should have some kind of standard where it's, it's not just like, yep, you had, you know, 40 hours of training, uh, here's your participation trophy and go out in the field and go get a job. Like there yeah. needs to be standard. I mean, I, 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 man, if I had some capital, man, I, I would, I would do my own, uh, you know, uh, trades games, you know what I mean? Like kind of like what Canada has, man, like, you know, they do some crazy awesome stuff up there. And I wish that we had the same, uh, to get people energized and, and, and wanting to be, uh, you know, in the industry and wanting to do these things, you know, it's, 
Instead, you know, we're, we're, you know, just trying to figure out and, and people keep, keep trying to just reinvent the wheel. Like they, they not reinvent the wheel. They're doing the same thing that they did all the time, expecting a different result. Right. That's the definition of insanity. Yep. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about this. Let's, let's try something new. Like, oh, if it fails, I, I don't mean, if I don't think it will, but I mean, like it, it, let's just tweak it. If we have to change something about it, let's just try something different because the approach that we're having isn't working. Every electrician shop should be doing something like this. Every steel fitter, like everybody should be doing something like this. Um, you know, so they, you know, so we get new blood in the industry. I mean, you know, the trades is what build this country, right? If we don't yep. trade, we don't have buildings, we don't have roads, we don't have electricity, and our food is not cold. We built um, this city. We built, sorry. You lost me. Oh, the you song, lost me. We, we built the city on rock and roll. Come on. Stop fucking with me, Brett. <laughs> I agree um, with you 100%, though, man. It's it's that it's going to take these one-off programs like yours and people doing it for it to become the norm because there's some good trade schools out there. I've seen some of them. We have one that we send our guys to in Arkansas, the Ultimate Tech Academy. Um Awesome. I don't think it's long enough, but they do an amazing job while they're there. Um, but that's the problem now. It's just a bunch of one-offs. There's no standards set, but it's going to take things like this to start getting moved, you know, put in motion for it to become the norm. Hey, look at what these guys are doing, man. Look at how many, you know, you don't ever see, um, this place, you know, trying to, um, you don't ever see them putting out ads for needing employees or needing techs. No, because they're growing their own. Um, and that's what a lot of big places are doing it. Um, but now we need to get it for just the, the trade in general. And and that's why we need to do this. I mean, like I said, um, trying to educate these guys and making sure they feel comfortable, you know, in what they're doing. Right. And so they can actually get home safe too. I mean, that's, that's one of the the downfalls of, of, you know, some of these, you know, for-profit centers is what I was speaking of where, you know, yeah, they, they, they know how to put on a set of gauges, but are they going to be safe? You know, no, you didn't have a chance to teach them safety, uh, proper PPE and what you should be wearing. You know what I mean? You didn't have a chance to do that stuff. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of negligent of you, right? I mean, you should be teaching these guys not only to be, you know, uh, you know, to t give them the knowledge, but also to do it safely. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, that kind of common sense a little bit right yes yeah, i mean it helped rush these people so through so much i feel like some of these kids leave with more questions than answers yeah like i you know there's there's you know when i when i start training with a with a kid like you know i'll ask him um and i'm like where's where's the blue line go oh i think it goes on the big line right the one that gets cold Okay. All right. Let's start again. You know what I mean? Like, and I, and I don't mean that like, you know, meanly, I just mean like, I, I, okay, I, I see what you were taught and you know, we, we just need to start fresh. You know what I mean? Like, I, uh, you know, I've been teaching a lot of like commercial stuff uh, here late or, you know, been involved with it because we, you know, we created the curriculum for it and I was co-teaching because it was one of the first classes of the like commercial that we did. And I was like, what's R22 supposed to be at on, on a, on a, on an air conditioning system? And I heard the answer that I absolutely dread. Oh, about 65, 63 pounds. And, and 410 is supposed to be about 120, 125. I was like, forget that right now. I don't want to hear a pressure coming out of your mouth from here on out. I said, everything needs to be unsaturated. There are way too many refri refrigerants out there. You need to be saturated. And like, well, I don't know what you mean. I was like, that pretty number that comes up when you have the pressure on your digital gauges right below it. That, that that's saturated temperature you know we need to be at you know what are we trying to do we're trying to remove heat or to remove moisture um so we need to be at around you know no not beer can cold wreck it ralph um no uh basically we need to be at around uh you know 38 degrees saturated because we're trying not to freeze up the coil water freeze at 32 we want to stay away from that you know and you you break that down and like and you know when i teach anybody like i, I try to give them you know basic rules of thumb like i'm i'm right now i'm a part of the the HVAC chicks uh, coalition and I have a mentee and uh, you know, her and I were talking and about like, you know, what, what you're looking for, like as far as uh, temperatures and given like rule of thumb. So if you ask somebody like where your head pressure basically is supposed to be right. Um, where's it supposed to be. 
you know, it's like, well, usually within this range, I'm like, but why? Uh, and exactly what we talked about when we first got on here, you know, we were talking about, you know, condenser saturated suction, you know, TD, right? So it's yeah. the ambient temperature versus, right? So at least that gives them a ballpark to really start with, right? We know we don't want to freeze on the low end, right? On the, on the low side. So we know we're supposed to be anywhere 36, 38 degree, maybe on a high low day, 40 degree saturated. That gives them a starting point right there. And then we can give them, okay, um, if it has a 25 degree or 35 degree TD, that'll give them a range of where their high side pressure is supposed to be. And then they can work right off from there. Yeah, no, I love that. There was actually a question for you that old Sammy boy asked a little bit ago, and um, I forgot to. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Um, he said, uh, Brett, is it a 21 months total or 24 months total, the course? No, no, no. It's 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 only uh no twelve weeks. Uh, you might have mis misheard me. Like I was talking about some other programs out there uh, where you might pay, you know, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars for like you know an eighteen month course. Um, but basically, it's you know nine to five. Um, f uh, for the next uh, it's a twelve week program, but for those weeks you'll be working out in the field. Um, so essentially a two month in lab, uh, in book work, uh, you know, type situation. So you're basically in training for three straight months. I think he means including the commitment afterwards is what he meant. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, 21 months in total. So, uh, so basically the three months counts as your, uh, you know, as part of the, part of the, uh, as part of the 21 months. Nice. You know, because I mean, that's uh, if honestly, like, if you actually like, if I want to quit my job tomorrow and get my CDL, I could do that. And they would basically, you know, they would teach me how to drive a big rig. And, you know, they uh, typically they, they have some kind of clawback clause where they just say, hey, I will do this for you. Just give me uh, 21 months of service. And, you know, the idea is, you know, you, you see all the all the excuse my language, but all the badass training that we do at Cool Sis, and you're going to be like, you know what, I'm staying here. Uh, I'm going to advance. I want to get better. I want to learn all the cool stuff that I can. Um, like I said, we, you know, we, we actually have four training centers uh, throughout the United States, uh, one in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, one in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, one in obviously Houston, Texas, and one in Fullerton, uh, Fullerton, California. And my idea is I want to build more. I want to utilize you know, what I have, you know, what offices that we do have, and basically – I, man, I just, I want to educate as many people as possible. And the more, ed more education we have, more people want to get into this industry and, and, and hopefully, you know, give a lot of more people a lot more work-life balance. Yeah. And I think that's become more, cause I remember, you know, back when I first got in the trade close to you, it's, you know, it was, you went to work and you didn't know when you were getting off and that's just the way it was. That's, that's what you did. It's what you got into, but you made good money. So you sucked it up. But I think now it's getting to where people, it's like, hey, I can be really good at what I do. I can make really good money, but I can still be home for dinner. You know what I mean? Or I could still miss, you know, I don't have to miss the ball game or be home for Christmas or whatever it is. Um, it's becoming more re more relevant, which is which is huge. Um, but yeah, I, I love the I love the the training thing, man. I love hearing that that kind of stuff um, because. I think that's something we also have as a duty as podcasters, influencers, whatever the hell that you call the stuff that we do um, <laughs> is when people are seeing us, you know, you know, some 18 year old kid sees our one of our posts and, you know, is like, oh, I like this guy. He starts to follow you. It has no idea what the hell you're doing, but he starts to follow it and he likes it. And he's like. I wouldn't mind doing this. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, go check out this. And they, they have a way to, to do that. Cause I feel like if you went to schools and you said, Hey, what if I told you you can make a hundred plus $150,000 a year and you weren't going to be a lawyer, a doctor, you know, and you didn't have to go to college per se, like a university. If I told you that was possible, what would you say? And kids are going to be like, what? That's not, that's, you can't do that. Well, I mean, yeah, to be, to be a doctor, I mean, how much, how much school debt are you going to be in? Yeah, probably a right. half a million dollars at least minimum. Well, college, what a college is at least what, at least at this point, it's like $40,000 a year. Right. I mean, am I exaggerating or I mean, no, I'm actually probably, probably minimum. I'm hoping, 
Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm hoping my daughter wants to do this because college is expensive, you know, mm -hmm. and then I just graduate with a thing in sociology. Um, I saw a question here. Hold on. Uh, yes, yeah, Sam, we, we have openings. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I guess just email me at uh, bwetzel at coolsys.com. I can have Gil throw it in the throw it in there. I can't add to the chat. Yeah. And then the other email is the uh, email of the of the the woman that's going to be doing the uh, the intake for the get paid to train. Um, and that you know anyone anyone sure that'd be I interested. That right. I put it in there. Where? Oh, I put it in the chat. You can see the chat, oh. right? I just want to make sure I, I, I did it right. Comments. Oh, okay. B. Wetzel at coolsys.com. Yep, that's the one. All right, cool. Adrian, pot calling the kettle, man. I Listen, I got a humanitarian word. You're the one that was like best social media content or whatever <laughs> that is. You know, and, and Adrian, you can't call me Hollywood. I called it first. Okay, and remember, comedy comes in threes. You can only use it three times before it sounds like you're just beating that horse in the glue. So <laughs> I think you're at number five. I've been counting. <laughs> so no more um no more weird messages from like uh And I I no, nah, I haven't gotten any of those in a while. I think they actually put me on a no fly or no call list. They probably realized <laughs> they're like don't call this number anymore. Oh my God. I, I like, I, I actually was talking about you the other day. I'm, I'm sure your ears were ringing. I was like, um, you know, I was like joking with the person I was talking to. I was like, man, I don't know if Gil's going to blow me off again. I was like, I was like, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but I was talking to him and I was like, yeah, I was hanging, hanging out, uh, with you and Ralph at, uh, uh you know, and, and, uh, uh, and Ty Brenneman and, uh, oh my God, why can't Craig, Craig, Craig middle out. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, I thought, I thought Gil was going to die. Like you were so red faced, you were laughing so hard. Oh, that's um, hilarious! And, oh my god, um, I won't talk about that on here now. That that's that's a that's a later conversation uh, for <laughs> another, for another topic. I don't want to ruin all the good work that I've done about being a good boy right now. Um, but yes, you were basically you were crying, uh, you know, at that restaurant. I was actually it was really hysterical, and you it and was. Scott doing the whole lady and the tramp thing with the with the cheesesteak that was adorable. <laughs> you're my boy blue um uh what did he say podcast of the year next year yeah I'm, I'm thinking i might uh be the first two-time winner we'll see um it's like now nah, you who knows um they're probably gonna let new new people win things but i mean a different award though hey i hope you do win it um what's he gonna say i want to win podcast of the year i have podcasts in my name and I haven't won it yet. <laughs> what I tell people, man, is look at the three people that have won that award. And we've all been podcasting for almost a decade. So just not saying some of you don't deserve it. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying, like, it, it, it'll come. Like, I, I can't believe that I did it. But you know what I mean? It's just, sometimes it takes time. And it's also the awards have only been around for a couple of years, you know? So don't. Three. Yeah, so I just well technically four because the first year it wasn't um it was just online. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So I was I, yeah the first one I was I was Chris's date I was Chris's third wheel, and he took me to the one out in Vegas as a as a pity date I guess I was with I was with him and his wife. Well, that's the first one I went to. So yeah, Vegas, Atlanta, and then this one I I had never I went to um HR in Orlando before COVID kicked off, but there wasn't, there was no awards then. Um, yeah. so rookie damn Gil call. I wasn't calling him out. Shut up rookie. Damn you. Um, and we, we won't go into the conversation, but just know that it was hilarious. Um, and it's hard to believe until you actually see it on Brett's phone. That's why I was laughing so hard. I was going to piss my pants because it seemed like it wasn't real, but it was 100% real. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing with me. Like a lot of people think that the stuff that I say is, is like, like doesn't exist or like that. I'm just pulling, pulling your leg when I'm, when I'm telling you. And then I'm like, <laughs> showing you my phone. you're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. That's exactly what it says. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like I said, like my son with, 
calling out my daughter's 16 year old boyfriend that didn't know his address. That was, Oh my God, that was just amazing. Like, um, you know, my, like I said, my, my son is utterly hysterical. And I, I said to him after he said that, I was like, I regret every parenting decision I've ever made me with you at this point in time, <laughs> because like his teachers are like, he's so brilliant. He's so, he's so smart, but I'm afraid of calling him. I'm like, why? Like, is he going to say something bad? He's like, no, he just, likes being very quick witted all the time. And I'm like, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. They're kids are funny, man, especially when they have no filter. Um, and it also sucks when they're just like you because <laughs> then you can't, when they do something, you're like, shit, I would have definitely said that. So I can't even get mad at him or her right now. Dude, he is utterly just savage and no remorse. And he, but he has, it's so funny. Cause like every, child like so every day when he gets home i pick him up from school when i am home i'll pick him up i'll take him back to the house and there's i can always tell which kid from down the block is coming to the house because there's one kid that rings the doorbell like five times in a row there's another one that's like ring ring so i can tell who it is just by basically like how they ring the doorbell and because i always try to be funny dad a lot of times i'll answer the door i'm like I don't want any and I just close the door on them and I hear them laughing or like all or, or the, and they're all like seven, eight years old. So which makes it even more funnier. And then like I'll answer the door. I'm like, who are you? It's Fiona. I've been here before. I don't even know you. And I close the door. And like and so one of the, the parents had called me. She's like, my daughter thinks you're utterly freaking hysterical because there's not one time you don't answer the door with something just ridiculous. It's it's just freaking funny. I like messing with people through the doorbell camera. Um, I'll just like, especially when people are bringing deliveries, I'll wait for them to get done and they're bending down and they're going to take their picture of it. And then I'm like, <laughs> and I'll, I'll scream or something. And the guy was like, and then one day he dropped this thing and I was like, oh shit, I think he just broke his machine. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I was just joking. He was like, nah, you're good, man. He's like, you definitely scared the shit out of me though. Um, so I just like, I do the same thing at work. If I see, People go outside to the dumpsters and um, we'll just leave stuff out there for the scrappers. I don't care. I, I tell them during the day, I'm like, hey, you can have this stuff if we leave it, but don't leave screws and a bunch of stuff by my dumpster. Or all of a sudden, you're, you know, your gimme's gone. I'm not going to leave it anymore. But if it's ones I don't know and I see them at night, I'll just like randomly yell or I'll mess with them. Like, hey, stop stealing my shit. I'm calling the police. And uh, it's hilarious. So just to show you how much kind of a, a sadist I am. So like I, I made it so the CO2 trainer, so it only has one controller, right? That controls the whole thing. But I figured out a way to actually put a router on there. And so everyone can see what's going on. So they can all look at the controller at the exact same time, like on the iPad. So everyone's all diligently working. And then basically I'm starting to manipulate things to make it, to make it the relief blow. I just don't say anything. I'm just like, I put it and I know it's coming. So I get the other phone out and I'm just like, <laughs> and you see, like, I missed it the one time I didn't actually record and it was utterly hysterical because someone literally ran and I, no one will ever admit who did, but they just took off running because here's the thing. This is the prime time to do that. Right. When, if you hear that out in the field, like, and you are not prepared for 600 pounds of pressure flowing out really fast or a, 1700 pounds of pressure flowing out really really bad you know like it's gonna it, you're gonna get scared the first time right? like yeah. you don't really know how to react you know your first response when you start seeing a leak is basically i gotta cover it up i gotta close it off no get the get away from it you know what i mean let it do its thing you know and just then let it roll um but you know that's one of the things about this like you know one guy felt really bad because he shut off a wrong switch and it blew part of the charge he's like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm like dude it rather do it here than do it out at a customer's facility where they have product that can go bad right this is where this is where we're supposed to mess stuff up this is where, where we're supposed to break stuff he's like well can we break something on purpose i'm no you know like i just you know i get it if it's an accident like you know but like you know but that's one of the funnest things for me is just uh making people like jump whenever when they're not expecting it right everyone's so diligently working you know checking the pressure transducers and then they start seeing something like fluctuating where it's not working right and then all of a sudden psh, and everyone's looking around like what happened yeah sorry hey bear with me all right it's literally right here no i have not shipped it okay i'm sorry i'm a piece of shit 
I will get it out as soon as possible. Okay? Kind of been moving and all this other stuff. Get off my back, Sam. Jesus. I feel like I've What's said Sam? more stuff. To, uh, nah, Sam, I did this thing. Um, it's It's been a little bit, but I didn't get... I. I got Sam and somebody else's emails, but, um, uh, those little things, uh, they're right here, but I forget the little, um, shit, little pro tool, the thing for finding like low voltage shorts. I had a bunch of them that I, I gave away, but then with my mom in the hospital and then, uh, the move in, man, I just got thrown out of whack. So I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I used to, I'm like, Oh yeah, man, I shipped it. So I'm being honest. It's in the mail. Yeah, I'm being honest. It, it's literally sitting right here. I have I have not done it. Um, but I love what you said about letting them hear the, like see that in um, in training because then when it happens, they know. Because you're right. Like I watched a thing that people are saying that the um, shit the the pepper spray like getting ga the gas chamber in military training should be taken away. Because it's cruel. No, it shouldn't. You do that so you learn what that feels like in a safe environment. So the first time you feel it, it's not in combat because guess what? You're dead. You know? I mean, granted, it's... Well, some of the stuff we do, you could be dead if you're doing the wrong thing. Um, but it's good to learn things in a controlled environment. So when it happens in the field, um, you know how to handle it. You know what it is. It's not the first time. So I agree with that 100%. Like I said, you know, like I, you know, I know when the first time I heard it, it scared the crap out of me. And then like, I wouldn't exacerbate it for the training center. I was like, what happens if I get someone to 3D print a choo-choo horn and put that right on the relief? I thought that would be amazing where it sounds like a train coming as soon as the relief blows, you know, uh, just, I mean, just to get them accustomed to like, like all of a sudden it's running, it's running, it's running, then it, then it blows. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, you know, like you said, it gets them prepared for when they actually hear it, you know, because the first time you hear something like that, you get scared, you jump, you definitely do. Every single person does it every single time. Speaking I'm just like, Oh yeah. A hundred percent just instantly. You know what I mean? So like, if you, you know, if you're not prepared, if you're not prepared for it, like when you get out in the field, it is going to scare the crap out of you. And your immediate response is, as technicians, what do we do? I got to fix it. I got to fix it. You know what I mean? And that's not what you have to do. You have to kind of be cool, calm, and collect and try to figure it out. It's like the first time coming into a machine room and it's quiet and you're like, shit. <laughs> you know, like, I, I remember walking into a call because, like, I usually just walk in with a short bag. And when I mean a short bag, a meter, six and one, uh, crescent wrench, reefer wrench, and a little shorty gauge, you know, and, and a little temperature clamp. And I was walking up to the back. It was like two o'clock in the morning. They said the rack was down. I was like, I'll get this fixed. And then all of a sudden I saw like a mist of refrigerant come from the motor room. And I was like, I looked, turned around the manager. I was like, I need to go back out right now. He's like, well, you haven't even got out there. I was like, I know what's going on. I said, I got a problem. I said, I got to get more shit. And I was like, get me out back outside right now. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, some of those things that happen, you know, that they wish it wouldn't have happened down the field, um, you know, to be prepared for those instances. I mean, I mean, I, I've had instances where I, I, oh my God, I was down in San Antonio, I was teaching and we were discussing how sometimes on these bigger fans, uh, you know, from vibration, they can actually break refrigeration lines. And so, um, you know, the reason why we use ter defrost termination in big freezers is because, you know, we don't want to overheat. We don't want to cause the little water droplets on top of the freezer. Right. And also water droplets will you know build up on the fan. I said, you know, and we were talking about this while we were in the motor room. I, we just looked at everything. The receiver what level was at 25%. Everything was right with the world. Everything was down with the temp. And we're, I'm talking about this thing. I was like, sometimes if they go into defrost too long, you have moisture build up on the fan blade. And then because that is the heaviest now fan blade, that you know, when it goes in, it, when it shuts off, it's just kind of sitting there. So now all the water droplets that are on there refreeze. So the next time, now that's now the heaviest one again. So it goes down to the bottom again refreezes and refreezes well it does that a couple times and then because it does that a couple times now it puts that fan blade out of balance and will shake the whole damn thing yeah when it shakes the whole thing usually causes a refrigeration line to break i said so you got to make sure that you know the defrost is working right fast forward 15 minutes we, we walk into the walk into the building now everything is working fine at this point I said, I'm going to go walk in the freezer because I wanted to kind of point out some of the stuff that I knew he was probably going to see based off of what I was seeing on the graphs. He goes to get the manager. I walk in 
And I get about halfway in the box and I start feeling the wah, 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 like, you know, it was starting to get dark real, real quick. And I just, I, I got out of the box real quick. I closed the door and I was starting to get dizzy. And I sat down like right, you know, right, right there. And I was like, uh, he comes up. He's like, you okay? I was like, don't go in there. He's like, why? I was like, we have a leak. He's like, everything was running right. I said, I know. I said, let's, let me, like, just give me like five minutes. I said, let me get up and we'll go over and we'll, we'll go check it out. And so we go over there and uh, the rack is dead flat. Nothing, nothing in there. So from that 15 minutes or 20 minutes that we were in and out there, the very thing that I said could happen did happen. It broke the damn line. It actually broke the liquid line. Uh, snapped it off and actually, you know, arced up. So like when it broke, it, it you know, it broke it off. Um, you know, and that, that's how important sometimes, you know, uh, you know, defrost termination is like it can cause, yeah, not just water droplets on the roof, but I mean, like if you have like a horse or horse and a half evaporator fan motor and that thing gets out of, it gets out of balance like a car tire, right? I mean, that's why they balance car tires because otherwise it freaking vibrates like hell, right? Yeah. Same thing with, uh, with, you know, with an evaporator fan motor. I actually have this cool little trick where, you know, you, you spray, uh, uh, what the hell is it? Food grade, uh, silicone on there on the fan blade. So then the, the, the water droplets can not actually freeze onto the actual fan blade. Okay. It, it lasts for a little bit. I mean, that's not the real true blue fix. I mean, the true blue fix is to fix the, you know, the termination issue or whatever, but, um, you know, if, if you're fighting with, you know, whoever just trying to get the fix done, you know, it's just a, a, a little thing. Pam works great. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, my, my, my papa used to use lard. Used to put lard <laughs> around. Yeah, well, don't some of those, I'm trying to, granted, I haven't done refrigeration in a little bit, but uh, some of them have like the, the counterbalances on them, you know, don't they? And you get people that take them off and don't put them back. No, no, no. Well, the counterbalance is there for like when the, the unit was originally, you know, balanced. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. But I'm saying like if you have water droplets filling up on there and and freezing on there, and because now that one has the heaviest one, it's always going to fall down back down to the bottom. So no, it's I, be... I believe you. I I wasn't saying what you were. I was just thinking out loud. Yeah. Oh no, no, I know. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Essentially, if they wouldn't do the counterbalances when they first, you know, installed those things, yeah, that's usually like, it looks like little kind of like brass rivets all the way around so they probably run it and they're like oh a little out of balance you know yeah i see it when people do it for like condenser fan motors and they're like oh i should move this i'm like you need to leave that alone like don't touch that that's that's not for you to mess with or you just destroyed a brand new fan blade like don't don't do that um um sadly uh even after starting late we're all we're at an hour actually past an hour do any of you guys um i know brett's traveling and stuff like that um and he's got classes to teach does anybody have any questions for brett or questions at all before we start uh closing this thing out um uh jason man i'm glad to hear things are going better brother um i know you've been through a lot in the last uh week or so man yeah you got to give me a phone call brother i tried reaching out to you and I, uh, I didn't hear what was going on but give me a shout man yeah i'm horrible with calling people back especially here crazy so I, I know i you i didn't call you back and i have to call jimmy too it's just been uh ever since my mom got out of the hospital and then now all this stuff with the move i feel like every day and then obviously still trying to run a company i just feel like my my head's spinning half the time all right so there's a couple questions i see what time do you go to bed and what time do you wake up uh depends uh depends what time i go to bed uh depends if i'm working late i mean i sometimes i go to bed 11 12 sometimes one and unfortunately my body clock absolutely hates me so i get up exactly usually anywhere from 428 to 426 every single morning and i try to go to sleep but i can't like once i wake up i'm up like i can't i can't roll back to sleep and you're probably you know commenting because i i look really really tired right now i know i do um and it's because teaching teaching is more exhausting, I think, than than working twenty four hours in a row. Because, like I said, you're you're firing all cylinders. You're trying to make sure. Like, I did an interview today, like during lunchtime, and you know the the person that came in that we interviewed, um, you know, was was sitting in the back, and and uh, we just you know she's like, I it's amazing that like like people ask a question and you got it and you got it and you got it. I was like, you have to, you have to. I can't. What am I gonna say? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I like, I don't want to be that person. Uh, do we have any uh, plans for Atlanta? 
trying, trying. I got I got plans for uh, potential Atlanta, and there's uh, maybe another potential place up north that I'm I'm thinking about uh, doing. Atlanta, I think, is going to be you know a place outside of Atlanta. Um, but yeah, that's that's my next go to is is where I'm where I'm hitting for residential basics. That's awesome. Do you, well, is how is your company as far as like when the class starts, like being able to get some film of it? Like, would you be able to like? do things social media wise or would they be like you know not for that so anytime that we have to do anything uh like if i have to record uh, if if like i want to use something uh you know I, the technicians have to fill out what's called a model form right you know just to make sure that they're cool with you know not that they're witness protection or anything like that to make sure that they're okay being filmed and and, and put out for social media um uh but no, actually, so we actually had a job fair a couple of weeks back and, and Hollywood uh, Reliable showed up, uh, you know, uh, oh my God, I'm so tired. Um, who else showed up? Uh, Visionaries, Adrian was there, uh, Wolf of HVAC where that was there. Oh my God. I want to call him another name, but I know if I do that, he's going to punch me in the face. Um, Mr. Tactical himself. I can't. Ben? Paul? Oh my God! Yes, Ben was there. Oh. Please. <laughs> so the all of them Brandon were Brandon again. Brandon Poli. Oh. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I wanted to call him something else, but he gets mad when I do. Um, no, but they all came over uh, and and hung out and and kind of met some of the people that we were getting at the training center over in Houston. Um, you know, just trying to get some of the, some new blood in there. Um, you know, just to see what, what course is about and like, what, you know, what our training's all about and so on and so forth like that. Right. Um, so they came out, they, they filmed and they made some videos and they made some baller videos. So if, if anyone watches any of their stuff, you know, please, please check it out. Uh, don't give Adrian any bigger of a head than he has. You won't be able to fit through the door and probably match the size of Miss Jennifer Manzo. So just love them both. I love you all. You guys, you guys are freaking great. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Hey, this is a family, man. We we bust each other's balls because we're friends. And bust, I guess you say bust vagina. I don't know. I, I mean, I was trying to peep the ladies in the conversation, but that went total wrong yeah. direction. It's totally south. No, but like, uh, <laughs> well, it's funny because like someone said uh, to Jennifer, is like, are you and Brett actually friends? And uh, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh man. But anyway, cause she's like, it's like, cause it doesn't act like it. I was like, it's, it's more of a brother sister thing. Cause I, I, you know, she like, I'll pick on her so constantly. Like, uh, you know what? Uh, I told her that I was trying to hit lady of the trade next year. Like that's what I want to win. I was hoping, you know, I guess if I would have showed up in a red dress, I probably would have run one. Um, but yeah, so like it, it's, it's constant bickering back and forth. Hey, nowadays we might have a man lady of the trade. Who knows? I, I hope Brett. not for the record, but just saying, um, is Brett wearing pants? Uh, everybody thought that I didn't wear pants for the longest time. Yes, I'm wearing pants. No Crocs. I left my Crocs back at home. Yeah. So just I'm going to surprise you guys. Watch. I'm going to get the new studio, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go get this giveaway item, and I'm going to get up. Fucking, you guys see my butt cheeks. Um, Now, nah, that might get taken down, but I'm going to do something. Watch. We'll see. I'll get you bastards. Um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll start to close this out, man. You go uh get some sleep because I'm I'm the same way. I gotta take the damn gummy, the weed gummies at night, or I don't sleep. Uh, rookie asked, will I be teaching in Fullerton? Um, no, we're we're hiring an instructor. Uh, you know, we're actually doing interviews right now for that. Um, I'm actually gonna be out in Fullerton next week. I will be visiting and doing some just you know some guest speaking and 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 you know doing some you know just. A, seeing how things are, but also being a part, uh, you know, trying to try to see if there's any way that, you know, we can we could, uh, you know, better the program. Cause it's all about, you know, just doing better, you know, while it, while it's going like it's it's really cool, man. I got a really cool, awesome development team. And so whenever we put out a new class, you know, it, it, you know, usually we'll have someone teaching it. Um, I'll be there and, you know, basically putting my little spit on stuff you know, my and two guys from my development team will be in there making notes okay we, this is a little messed up hey we got to shorten this down a little bit we got to do this so we're always trying to make the you know the stuff better you know what i mean heard that new instructor is top notch which new instructor 
I don't know what Kraus means by that, but I thought it was worth putting on the screen. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, you know, sometimes I don't know. He's, he's, uh, he looks like he's 12. He says <laughs> that he's older, like, but I, I really don't think so. And it looks like, like he just took some of that long, lustrous, gingery blonde hair and basically just kind of glued it down here. So I don't know if that's fake or not. It's like kind of like a Merkin, but like a, like a, a facial Merkin. I'm not really sure. Oh, uh, if you just saw when I two handed pet his hair at AHR, I was like, Hey, I don't, uh, half I don't half ass anything. Um, and the look that he gave me was priceless. I wish I had, if I had a picture of that, I'd put it on a t-shirt and sell it because it was fucking hilarious. Dirty martini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, you people. Oh, too my much. God. Yeah, we are. Uh, no, but uh, next time, uh, I mean, it'll probably, you know, Gil, you'll probably blow me off for another six months. But, like, uh, next time we, we hook up, we'll... <laughs> We'll tell. Well, I, could, I got some really funny stories. Uh, I told a couple uh, with uh, Adrian's crew. Man, uh, I just don't want to. I don't want to ruin the the good things that I'm doing right now. I'm trying to keep this. You know, trying to keep it good right now. Yeah, no, it's good, bro. You know, you're always welcome back, man. And like I said, I definitely get you back to being the, um, you know, one of the newer ones in the new studio and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we will. Start I'll get. To I'll get all my uh, I'll get all my text ready so you can you know so I can actually po see some of the pictures of some of the things that we'll be speaking of. It'll be hysterical, I promise. <laughs> I I'll be checking. I can't wait to see them. And the funny <laughs> thing is, two days after I came home and I told you that I don't ever get weird numbers, I got a weird number and I started laughing. But the person wouldn't engage, so I was like, "This is no fun." Um, well, so there's, there's a there's there's a little bit of tact with it though. Like you you can't just go like full ridiculous you have to like you have to get them really interested right so you have to tell them that you make a lot of money uh there was one time i think i told them where i was uh i made a lot of money in medical um selling selling cat urine or something like that <laughs> but like it, like i got them in that way like and i was just and then like usually like I, I usually use you know someone's name that i know but i have to get authorization to do that so i was gonna use uh pat from commercial Kim, uh, kitchen chronicles and then I didn't because he wouldn't text me back. So I had to find another Pat from the internet. And then I, he was a software engineer. So I just went with that story. And so that was the picture I used. And it just, it snowballed from there. That's funny. Uh, yes. Thank you, rookie. So he put um, Brett's uh, email again. So if any of you are interested in this class um, or anything related to that training, um, hit him up for, for sure. Um so, but uh, we will close this out, Brett. Thank you for coming on, brother. You know you're always welcome here, man. Um, and I, I, I tell people like, especially people that don't know you, that you have that funny, like, you know, kind of quirky attitude. I'm like, yeah, he, he's a funny guy, but he's also very smart, and you're very good at what you do. So, um, don't let that, you know, fun personality fool you because um he's he's very smart you know one of the smarter guys I've met in the grand scheme of things. So, um, that that's just the truth. I appreciate it, man. I really do. I mean, like, well, I mean, I just don't want to, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I guess I don't really want to just go full nerd, right? So, I mean, like, I, you know, I enjoy making. Like, my my daughter asked me the one time. She's like, "Why do you make people laugh all the time?" I said, "Because it's so it's so easy to give give someone a smile on their face by just making them laugh. It takes more energy to be mean and kind of be a jerk. So, like, living your life like that constantly takes more energy out of you and puts more negative energy out there. So." Dude, why, why not just have a good time and, and, you know, make some people laugh and smile on the way. Amen. Amen. I feel the same way. Um, well, if God forbid all of you, uh, especially the people here, I know, know who you are, but if somebody listens to my audio podcast and maybe you don't listen to others, uh, if you didn't hear in the beginning of the show, Brett is also the host, well, one of the hosts of the advanced refrigeration podcast. They talk about, some amazing stuff, some technical stuff. They go over, they explain it. Even if you don't do refrigeration, it is worth your while to listen to it because it's going to teach you things that are going to translate in the refrigeration cycle in general. Um, plus, it's just good to learn. So if you are not listening to his podcast, please go do that. If you're interested in the training, I will put his email in the show notes as well if you're not watching the live show so that you can reach out to be able to get in touch with him. Um, so please, please do that. So, 
Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Get some sleep and uh, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate it. You're my pleasure, buddy. Let me close this out. Um, thank you to everybody who came to the live, uh, the live show, man. There's been a bunch of you. I feel like all I have is moderators. I got to stop making all my friends mods. Um, obviously, Jason Johnson was here. Uh, Mr. Nasty, HVACR. Jennifer Manzo, lady of the trade herself. Um, Mr. Uh, Brian Sanders, HVAC rookie, podcaster of the year, assistant of the year. I think that's an award. Um, nah, rookie. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Jessica Egan, always love seeing her. HVAC Nate. Uh, Nate is doing awesome things on Instagram. Very consistent. Keep it up, Nate. Um, Mr. HVAC Residential Basics. Hello, sir. I'm so glad to see you here. Let's see. I want to make sure I try to call him, uh, Mr. Reliable HVACR, Mr. Adrian. What up? What up? Uh, I know Mr. Sammy was here. Sam Andrew always busts my balls, but he's loyal. He's been coming here for a long time. Uh, Liliana. I'm not sure. Morales, first time seeing you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah. HVAC blogger. What is up, homie? You need to hit me up, man. If you don't like your job, come see me because I'm hiring. Um, let's see. I think all these are the same people. I just want to make sure I want to try to give it out to every, any everybody. Um, anybody on Facebook, if you comment, I can't see your name. So if you did... Uh, thank you. I appreciate you for coming to comment. I just didn't know who you were. And, um, I think I got everybody. So if I missed you, I apologize. Uh, obviously Mr. Krause already named him and I think I got everybody. So, oh, East coast. Yes. East coast. I almost missed him. Everybody else. I think I got, if I missed you, I apologize, but I don't want to keep this going too long. Um, Yes, uh, remember, like I said in the beginning, um, this is the last episode in this studio. That's a fact. Um, literally, when this is done tomorrow, this stuff's getting unplugged, taken down, so I will not be doing another podcast in this current studio. I'm hoping to have everything done to be able to record next Wednesday, but it, it's a lot. So that's what I'm aiming for, but if I don't go next Wednesday, I will 100% percent be ready to go the following Wednesday so we'll see I'm gonna try to get all this together uh it's a lot of logistics moving um to a house an hour away trying to get all this stuff there and moving it all around but uh with that being said thank all of you for coming here I appreciate you I love the people that are in the chat every week even if it's just bs and back and forth and not even about the topic we're talking about I just love the interaction and I appreciate each and every one of you for coming um so, yeah, I think that's it uh, with that being said. And you guys, I will, um, I'm going to take these packages right here when I leave so I can get them out, all right? I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm going to try to get them out um, as soon as possible. Um, yeah. All right, time to close it out. Guys, remember, be safe out there. We all got somebody to make it home to. Keep your head on the swivel. Make sure the breaker's turned off. Whatever it is, just be safe, all right? Um, it's already a crazy world. Remember, do the little thing. Set yourself apart from the next guy or girl. Keep trying to be better at what you do. Keep learning. Um, whether it's a book, a podcast, a YouTube video, an online course, uh, a local supply house, uh, whatever interplay learning, which somebody asked in there, I highly recommend. All of that stuff is going to better you. Um, even if it's something that's not even trade related, just keep testing yourself, keep getting better when it comes to A2L refrigerants, learn the new practices for it, educate yourself, be ahead of the curve. Don't wait for something to happen and then be on the back end of the wave. I would rather be on the front of it, know what I'm doing, be able to explain it and not have to worry if I'm doing something wrong. It's just not worth it. All right. Um, that being said, man, I love all you guys. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe. And I'll see you mofos hopefully next week in the new studio. All right. Don't forget to go like, share, subscribe to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So you stay up to date on everything that is going on with the podcast. And uh, I'll see you next week. See you.
Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests.